All right, figured I'd document this process, but I'm gonna be building a powder coating cabinet or oven. So I'm taking this and putting it in this, which is just a file cabinet. So basically what I'm gonna do first is probably, probably gut this and try to figure out a way how the insulation's gonna work. And then while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna be probably gutting this and getting all the parts out of it that I'm going to be using. Um, I'll keep a cost tally at the end so we have a rough idea how much it would cost you guys to do it. Um, but I'm going to start by gutting this and we'll be back. is pretty well stripped so got about everything out of there that I think I'm gonna use for now no more uh... oh I need to get that light still I'll get that light out because I think I'm gonna use the light in the de in the new thing that'd be handy put a light up top or something make it easy to see in there um, but got everything off it was actually pretty easy it only took me about 20 minutes got all the wiring off got the both of the heating elements off and then if I ever wanted to add more elements I could always add these in there too which I probably won't because I think these two will be plenty to keep it hot hot enough for what I'm doing because you really only need it about maybe 450 max on powder coat so what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to go through this wiring harness and pull off all of the um, all the bits that control those top pieces that way we just have a little less wires going on here I'll probably take some pictures of it before I do that though and then we'll be back all right got the wire pretty much stripped down to what we don't need now all of this is basically what controls the top surface elements and then this is like the switch that tells her whether or not the stove is on or off. So what I did was I just checked with the ohm meter to see if clicked on or clicked off, whether or not it has, um, whether or not. All right, I'm back. My GoPro battery died there. Um, but basically what I've done is I've taken all of the stuff that I don't need off of this. So all I have now is the light, the switch for the light, the controls for the, um, what you might call it, the elements, and then um, the bit where the extension cord's gonna go in. Have roughly where it's gonna go. A lot of these wires are gonna have to get extended, um, but basically this is what's, what's gonna happen with it. Um, and then I, there are some support beams going across here, um, and I just drilled out the spot welds on the bottom. I don't know if you can really see that or not, but there was two spot welds on each of them. I just drilled those out, took those off, and then I welded on some casters on the bottom of the thing. Um, you kind of see. I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, why not screw them in there, make them so they're replaceable. I don't really care. Um, this thing's going to get rolled around, and if it doesn't roll perfect, it at least rolls better than nothing is all I really care about so if one of them gets stuck up and then is what it is that's what they make WD-40 for so um, basically what I'm gonna do next is probably fit all of the insulation here's the insulation I'm using it is um, R30 unfaced fiberglass I think this is like $20 at Lowe's um, it has a temperature it can withstand up to like 700 degrees, I think, on temperature. Um, when it's fully expanded, it's like nine and a half inches, um, but it can compress way down. So it really doesn't have all of the R. I don't think, I don't think it's a full R30 if it's all the way compressed, which I, what I'm going to be using it as, um, because I think the air helps a lot with the R value. But I think it's going to be pretty close to what the oven was doing. If you can see on this old oven, I mean they just. 
all it is is just some fiberglass or wool packing and they just wrap it around there and it, I mean it's only an inch thick and but then there's like you know there's two inches of air between this and the outside of the oven but I don't think it's going to get hot enough that it'll bug me um, I think maybe this these sides will get pretty little warm but I don't think they'll be scorching hot that you'll burn yourself so um, basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of that insulation shove it down in between these edges and just fill the whole sides um, so the sides have full insulation and then I'll do the same on the back and then what I'm going to do is I have this uh, steel sheet out here this is 16 gauge um, I'm going to break it so that it's like a C channel so basically that'll just come in and just push into here and then I'll probably tack weld it on the outside or something alright so we got the inner box built it was a bit of a challenge because we don't have the right tools <laughs> but I got the inner box built so basically it's just sitting in there right now um, it's not attached to this at all there's no insulation or anything now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out um, fit everything in there I need to like all the elements the light um, and then finish welding it a little closer and then we'll put it all back in with insulation all right we're back so um it's a couple days but finally starting to work on it again basically what i did this round is i uh just mounted mounted everything in here you can kind of see it so i mounted one on each side one of the elements on each side i threw the temperature probe right in the middle and then put the light up top. So basically what I did was I just mocked everything up from the back, drilled my holes, and then um, used the oven hardware. So, all right, I'm back again. Sorry, the GoPro battery died mid-conversation again last time, but I'm just gonna give a small explanation of where I'm at. So I got everything kind of roughly wired up. Um, this is by no means permanent at all. <laughs> just uh, testing it. Um, I got it turned on just seeing if the if it works still um, I got that left side working the right side I haven't hooked up yet um, right now it's just on broil so I should be able to turn this over to broil and then that right side will start heating up um, hopefully but I got the light in there I'm gonna turn that on um, I'll just utilize the switch off of the oven wherever it went right here and have a nice little light in there that's going to be heat friendly so that's good um i'm just basically going to make sure that other side works um and then as long as i know they both work i'll uh move forward with mounting this thing into the file cabinet over there so looks like that one's heating up now for sure I think this thing's going to get to 400 pretty freaking quick and hold it pretty good. So um, should be pretty handy for powder coating. But as you can see right here, I uh, just built these little clamps to help hold those in and tight so they don't wobble too much. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's the last bit. I'm going to shut this guy off now, let her cool down for a while. Go through finish weld and then maybe plasma cut off these edges that were kind of overhang. Um, I just did them rough because I don't really care too much how it looks on the outside because this is all going to be inside the case right here so you're not going to see it. So I might go plasma off those edges and then um, work on insulating that thing and get her together. So I'll be back. Alright, so I got this all welded up. Pretty sturdy, warped a little bit, so some of the top and bottom aren't perfectly flat anymore, but it doesn't really matter. And I got this guy full of insulation, so basically just want put one sheet on the back, and I cut each individual sheets and kind of shoved them underneath these little studs. Um, we'll see. I was going to try to put some aluminum tape on here to, to hold it while I put this in, because this is a very snug fit, but I don't think that's going to work, so... Basically just going to try to put this in and hold the insulation on at the same time. 
going to be kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll give it a shot. All else fails, I'll just uh, take it off and then rip this insulation out and then just shove the insulation in with a pry bar or something along the edges after this is already in. Um, so I'm going to give this a shot and I'll be back when it's installed. All right, we're back again. So that did not work. <laughs> it just... Uh, this fits so tight that it just dragged all of that and put it straight down to the bottom. So I took it back out, stuffed in between or behind the studs. Um, so those shouldn't move because this won't even come in contact with those. Um, now I'm just going to drop this boy in and then I'll shove all of the insulation just around the cracks. There's about an inch gap right there that I'll be able to just shove it in. And I think that's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to do that now. Figured I'd show the process of kind of how I'm getting the insulation in there. So basically, as you can see, it's pretty bowed, but I'm going to get some um, self-tapper screws and do one on each bar. So there, 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 and it'll suck it in flat and compress all that insulation pretty easy. But basically, I'm just shoving it in like with my finger like that and then using a pry bar to make sure it gets all the way to the bottom. And I'm actually just using sound to tell if it's kind of there or not. So as you can see down here, kind of a loud thud. <coughs> and up there it's kind of more of a ting. So that's a better comparison right there. So kind of using sound to see if it's getting down and around everywhere. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it'll be good enough for what it does, it's just gonna be out in the shop. It shouldn't be of a hazard if it gets too hot. So um, I'll be back when I uh, got it all buttoned up. Okay, we're back. So we got this in here and we got all of the insulation in. Um, we basically went in, put some insulation in between the studs or behind the studs, and then we just shoved the insulation down. I used a pry bar and shoved it down in. Um, and then uh, came through here and I put some self-tapping screws, about three on every stud or so, to help suck this in so it's tight and there aren't any uh, bubbles. Gives me more room inside the actual oven. Um, then we went through and drilled out all the holes for the um, equipment that's gonna go in there for the elements, the temperature bung and the, the light. Um, and this came through back here. So now what I'm gonna do, um, I intentionally left a bunch of extra right here so that I could Go through and bend it back. I'm just gonna cut reliefs um, down about probably to the center and then another one from here or so to the set to the bottom um, so I can easily bend this and then I'm gonna go back and weld and grind that smooth. Do that on both sides, probably build a little plate that goes around top up here as well. Um, this stuff I've tested it with the welder, it doesn't catch fire or anything, it just kind of smolders, so I'm not really concerned with it starting on fire and being a hazard. So Gonna do all that, finish this up, and then we'll get working on the door. All right, we got them bent. So, uh, lesson learned, I did this one first. I just did kind of wider bits up here, one in the middle and then one down here. Um, when I did that, it kind of makes this metal bend out a little bit right here. So I tried doing more tabs, but thinner on this side, and that works much better. So next time, that's what I'll be doing. Um, more more tabs but smaller tabs that way it bends a little straighter um, i think that side turned out much better than this side did but now i'm going to weld them and grind them smooth and work on the door all right we back i haven't uh, done as much as you might have thought um ran out of welding gas so i only got those kind of tacked up down there um, so i figured i kind of just jumped onto the next step um, and that was wiring so basically just got everything laid out here um, got all my components in and started extending all the wires that needed extended. Um, I used, I did not use any extra wires that were not out of the oven. So I um, just spliced extras that were together, figured I figured that was probably the best. I used the same ones that were for the burners, um, same, um, same gauge, same temperature ratings and stuff. I just read on the wires and used all those accordingly. So got it all extended. Um, I'll put some wire loom over this and some wire management here soon, probably when I'm done with the, the door and stuff, but uh, I'm just doing this test right now. So I got it plugged into uh, 220 and it's working up front. 
we got to check the light. Light works too. It's actually really bright in there, so that'll be handy. And then, um, so I wired, I can put these on, turn it on now. So I wired the two elements together. So right here, I just strung them together. And that way, if you either go to broil um, or to the temperature setting, it always will um, turn both of them on. Um, I've tested it for about 15 minutes so far and none of these wires have heated up at all so I don't think we're going to have any issues with uh, too many amps or anything but so yeah you can see it's starting to get pretty warm you'll see them get glowing hot here in a second but yeah so basically all I got to do now is get some more welding gas weld this up um, paint the inside I'm going to paint the inside white so it's kind of reflective and bright and then I got to build a door and we'll be all done. So this project takes a little longer than what you might think. So now you can see both of those are heating up. Um, it'll turn off at 200. Uh, the temperature sensor is right there in the middle. So yeah, we'll probably be back when I'm building the door. All right, I'm back. Not sure how long it's been since I left off, but basically got all this bit welded down and then ground smooth. So pretty happy with it. Um, got the door partially done so basically I just cut out a piece and then left some slits and then hand bent it um, and then now I just went and got it all tacked together so it holds holds somewhat true for the most part. Not going to be perfect but don't really care too much and then I'll stuff it full of uh, insulation and cap it and weld it and then grind everything and hang the door and we'll be uh, ready to rock and roll. So. I'm going to get all this welded up, everything um, finished up, and then get the door mounted up on the hinges that I got, wherever they went. Oh, they're right here. And uh, I got some smaller ones, but I ended up using these, going to end up using these bigger ones, just because they're uh, a little more strong, and this thing ended up being heavier than I thought it was going to be. So I'll mount them like that, so they'll weld to the inside of the doors. So that, that's the most, that's the way I can mount them the most flush. There'll be like a millimeter gap right here along this whole edge, but I think it's going to be fine for what we're doing. Um, and then I got a little latch to put on this side of the door. So um, next thing you'll see, it'll all be welded and grinded and uh, I'll probably be stuffing it with insulation and then probably ready for paint. All right, I'm back. So it's been a couple days, but finally got to working on it. Anyway, capped off the top here. Got it all grinded down somewhat smooth. Um, welded this door all up and got the edges grinded. And then I got it stuffed with uh, insulation. So uh, my one bag was almost enough. I had to steal some from the old oven uh, to finish it off, but now it's all uh, ready to go. So basically what I'm gonna do is cap it and uh, mount it with some hinges and get it ready for paint. So that's probably the next thing you'll see. All right, so we got the door all mounted up. Just a couple hinges there, down there, and then weld it on the inside. And then I've also got this latch installed, so that's pretty good. And then I just went through and added in some um, washers. These will sit like that, and the zip tie goes under them, and it'll hold the wires in all nice and square, so they don't it's not moving around. But basically, you just take a washer and bend it at about a 90 degree angle, and then grind off the two edges if it's not if it's coated and just tack on the tack it on on both sides so now the cabling will have somewhere to go nice and neat so not necessary but figure might as well so basically all I got to do now is uh, on the inside I got these grates out of the oven I'm gonna cut these down so they fit so they fit in like you know just like they would in the normal oven and then tack them back together and then uh, I'll also build some little little shelves right here so that this can slide in there nice and easy and uh, yeah so once I get that done I'll be back and um, after that we'll paint it all right we're back uh, just before paint now so Got a couple racks in there, got them shortened and uh, just tacked back together. Um, one, one up on top, one up down on the bottom. Uh, I basically just folded over a couple pieces of uh, scrap and put three small little deals on that sides 
on each side so they, they just slide in and out now. Um, did one up higher so that if I'm hanging something from the rack and slide it in, it'll work. Um, and I did one a lot, down a little lower if I wanted to set something on here. Um, and then also, just under, just above this top rack, I just added a couple, couple little uh, hooks there, just if I need to hang anything in here and um, and let it dry or and cook it that way. So, um, as far as fab goes, this is really about it. Um, I think at some point I'm probably gonna maybe do a, a fancier controller um, and temperature sensor and stuff. Um, but I just wanted to kind of keep this low budget to start and kind of proof of concept, make sure everything works and then might order like a PID system or I think that's what they're called, but something to help better control the temperature of the oven and then uh, maybe upgrade it down the road. So I'm not going to really make anything of this too much fan too fancy of it aside from what it is right now. I don't think I'm going to build any sort of top box or anything right now because I think I'll probably end up replacing it soon. All right, I'm back. The oven is all complete and I'm trying out my first uh, coat. So just got this Harbor Freight powder coat gun and this uh, little hood off Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for it. But it basically just uses a um, house, whatever you call it, filter and a box fan, set it up and it kind of helps prevent, keep the powder all over the place. Still messy, but not quite as bad. Um, got the very first uh, item in here right now. I kind of did a little test coat on just some scrap metal to see how it works. I've never power coated before, but turned out pretty rigid. So, so far pretty happy with it. All right, we're back. Uh, the GoPro died there. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how my first set went. So I just, this is oil rub bronze from Prismatic Powders. Turned out pretty good. Um, we just did our bathroom faucet stuff because they don't make them anymore. But turned out good. It was pretty easy to apply. No complaints. Um, oven worked great. So here's the finished product for the most part. As you can see, I don't have the greatest sealant. Um, they weren't rated for the temperature that I'm that the oven gets. So uh, that melted. <laughs> but I'll have to get some better stuff and replace that but first go around went good heated up to about 400 in about eight minutes or so and then um hung the rack hung them in there and then cooked them for 15 minutes only bad thing about the oven is this door gets super super hot i knew that was going to happen with making it out of steel and i should have just made it out of aluminum but um i didn't want to spend the extra money that was going to take to make it out of aluminum because a uh, piece of aluminum, the amount of aluminum it would take to make that same door would be like 150 bucks for a sheet of brand new aluminum around here. But steel it was, so it gets pretty hot. So I'll have to put some stickers on here or something or write, don't touch, it's hot. And of course the handle gets pretty warm too as well because the screws are in here on the inside so they just heat transfer. Um, but overall, um, good oven, happy with it. It's going to be able to cure all of the powder I want and fit my needs basically so should be able to fit a wheel in there if i want to do wheels i'll be able to fit all the suspension parts from the buggy so i'll do all that in here as well um but pretty nice got a little little light switch on and off it basically heats up to 400 degrees just swipe swipe it to 400 and it goes and that thermometer kicks off and beeps at you when it's preheated um, and then once it's once you got your powder in there um, I got a timer on here as well, so works pretty good, I think. So, yeah, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Um, I never, here's kind of the back, I guess. I was going to build like some panels and stuff to go over this, but I decided it wasn't worth the time. Um, but yeah, so let me know what your guys' thoughts are. This took me, I don't know, probably about 15 hours of work to build, and... I'm going to say it costs under $200 with the oven, filing, cabinet, and everything. I'll add it all up and put it down in the description with links to everything for if you guys decide you want to do it yourself. Um, but main takeaway, build an aluminum door, um, get some better sealant, and other than that, everything else I would do it again.
Peace out.